Okay, since me and my mates finished off the bikepacking season last weekend with the last overnighter for the year, I thought it would be a good opportunity to do a little uh, overnighter bikepacking list and how I pack my stuff. Personally, I love these kinds of videos. I can watch them all day. And even though I don't think you should copy exactly my setup or anything, maybe you can find a little piece of information that might help you improve your setup or just get some general tips on how to pack or stuff like that. And once you're done with this video, I would highly recommend you head over to Ride Adelaide and watch his bikepacking setup video, which is also excellent. And he's more of a bivy guy uh, compared to me, which is a tent guy. So you can get kind of a two different kinds of setups. Also good to point out that this is an overnighter. So I don't really need to worry about keeping stuff grouped in different dry bags to keep stuff from contaminating other stuff like say dirty beep shorts contaminating my sleeping gear something like that so this will be for one night and i can stuff all the things back in the bags without worrying about that go home and take care of the cleaning afterwards it also means i can focus on getting all the gear in the order that i will want to unpack them and to take up as little space as possible. Oops, it's me from the future all packed up. I forgot to mention one of the main uh, points of this video and that is the pack list check sheet I have linked down in the description. Even though this was just an overnighter, I still forgot something and I think this spreadsheet will help me in the future and hopefully it could help anyone else that feels like they forget stuff. So description. And if you want to use that for yourself, just go to the file menu in Google Sheets and click make a copy uh, to your own account and use it for however you want. Now, back to the start. And since this was a trip that will end our bikepacking uh, season, it meant that it would be pretty cold and we were expecting anything from 7 degrees all the way down to 3 degrees, depending on where we were staying. In the end, I think it was around six degrees maybe, but I was still using my summer sleeping bag. This is the Aegis Max Ultra Light, something like that. And the comfort rating on this bag, I think it's 11 degrees. So I wouldn't really recommend anyone taking this kind of bag if you're expecting like five, six degrees during the night. But there's a few things you can do to extend the weather range of your bag. One is to use this kind of sleeping bag liner. This is a silk liner and this, this will add a few degrees to the temperature rating or whatever you want to call it. It would also make it a bit uh, cleaner, I guess. It's much easier to clean and liner than it is clean and sleeping bag, for example. And it kind of feels nice as well, to be totally honest. This liner together with a bunch of layers that we will get to in a bit, uh, actually made this six degree night totally sleepable without any freezing issues. So this sleeping bag with the liner inside will go in the bottom of my seat back. And since this is uh, shaped this way, having your sleeping bag here in the bottom, really pressing it down to take up all this space that usually ends up as dead space otherwise, works pretty good. So I will simply take my sleeping bag and start working this down into the bottom. And I will probably speed up this process because it takes a while to get it all down there in the bottom. Hard work, but uh, if I do this well, I should at least have half of the bag left with the sleeping bag in the bottom. I think this should be enough to fit some other stuff. And the next thing I will fit in here will be the main staple of my layering strategy. And there's a long sleeve merino base layer. This will be the thing I will put on once the tent is set up. I will also sleep in this. 
yeah, it's just awesome. And you know, it doesn't smell even if you do. So I will put that up on the sleeping bag. On top of that, I will actually put my cooking kit. And this cooking kit, I made a other video about. I will link that down in the description. I think that was the budget backpacking kit video. Anyway, a Stanley cooking pot. In here, I have my gas stove, a lighter and a sponge. And I have the fuel, which is a gas canister. A little tip here that probably most of people know already. But anyway, once I get a new canister, I weigh it, write down the, the weight. So I know if I use this for one trip, I need at least about 60 grams of fuel left. This is 100 grams or 110 grams, maybe. So anyway, I need to weigh this before I go out. And as long as I have at least 60 grams of fuel, I know I should be good for dinner and breakfast. So yeah, and in the bottom, I have a bunch of paper towels and some rags. You never know when you need paper towels for all kinds of stuff. That simply goes in the bag. like this and around this to take up the dead space around I will put more layers and to start with we have leg warmers that will work awesome both in camp and in the sleeping bag when it gets really cold I will do the same with arm warmers I have a set of winter weight socks I have a beanie because yeah I want to keep as warm around the head and all the extremities as possible. The last thing I will put in the seat pack is this down vest. This is actually from Uniqlo, so very cheap, but this inside of the sleeping bag will be the perfect last little step in getting that sleeping bag to clear a lot more than that 11 degrees comfort rating. So with all these layers on, I slept comfortably, comfortably in uh, about six, was well, six or seven degrees, no issues at all. And that's a seat pack. Then we'll move on to the handlebar bag or the handlebar roll. This is the pronghorn from Revelit Design. This is the smallest roll because yeah, my, my handlebars is not that wide, but I can still fit a lot in here. And here I will actually have a set of long pants and some underwear because it's always nice to get out of those sweaty beep shorts. So I will put this in the bottom of this bag because I know I don't need these long pants until I have my tent set up so that can be in the absolute bottom. Something like that. And then we'll move on to the tent. And this is the Big Agnes two-person tent. So it's not a small tent at all really, but it's pretty damn compact. I will try to fit everything in this little small compression sack. So here I have the inner tent, the outer rent fly, and the footprint. And we'll try to get all this in this bag and let's fast forward this. There we go. Not bad for two men tent. This will go in the handlebar bag. like so and in the same bag we will also squeeze in my uh, sleeping mat which is the sea to summit ultralight like so i should also be able to fit this stuff sack for that sleeping pad but it also works as a little pump 
to pump it up so I don't need to blow it up with my lungs and get a lot of the humidity down into the pad and make everything moldy and stuff like that nothing super necessary but yeah why not and that's it for this bag let's try to get all the air out and so something like that and I should be able to squeeze this in between my handlebars even though I have pretty narrow bars on top of that harness I will also put the tent poles and I will put one of the straps through this loop like you can see here so it doesn't fall out while riding it's a pretty neat solution the tent stakes will go in the last bag that goes on top of that handlebar roll and this is this handlebar pouch so here I will put all my small itty bitty bits uh, starting with those tent stakes I will also put my plastic cup for coffee and beverage and in that I will actually put my pillow use up as much space as you can uh, this is also Sea to Summit inflatable pillow because why not enjoy sleeping my tooth hygiene always good to keep them as good as possible my spork this I forgot last weekend that's why I made this spreadsheet that I forgot to mention in the beginning my Swiss Army knife, my little uh, Apidura Muset, uh, really compact and this folds out to carry some extra food or drinks and stuff like that. It's also a three point Muset so it doesn't swing around when you ride. Uh, don't need to use it but it's always good to have that option. Same with my softball one liter. If you want some extra water I will have three bottles on the bike. Uh, which should be enough but since it doesn't really take up much space why not my wallet my head torch for setting up camp in the dark it's not fun if you don't have a head torch you can do it with your bike light or something like that but it's very very nifty to have I promise a battery bank that I actually didn't use and if I didn't have a camera I probably wouldn't bring this at all but always good to have a backup power source for your phone or whatever and that's that bag for now and I still have plenty of space in here to get food and food will most always be made up of ramen and snacks but all the food we get for our trips usually we pick up and the last stop before camping that goes in out on the road so I always make sure I have plenty of space for food in my case, like I said, ramen, maybe some sausages or something like that. Something sweet. Always good to have something sweet. So I have three pieces left here on the floor that you maybe can see. I have a neck gaiter and I have a hard shell rain jacket and I have my spares, which is a spare tube, multi-tool, tubeless plug extra chain link stuff like that that we go into my frame bag like so and the reason I have these two pieces here is if it gets cold if it starts raining I want it to be really easy to get out and not have to dig through any bags or open any weird roll tops and stuff like that so I keep that in the frame bag and even with this still in the bag, I still have plenty of room for some extra snacks and stuff like that. And speaking of those snacks, the top view bag here will be my ride snacks. Haribo's of course, easy access to a GoPro or a camera, something like that. In terms of the bike, it's pretty much what you see here. The only thing I changed is I put on my SPD pedals and I will also change the seat post and seat clamp to something a bit sturdier from hanging off this bag on it so my old MV seat post will go on there I just don't want to gamble with those light weight weenie parts like I said I will have three water bottles on the bike and that's pretty much the complete setup I hope if I forgot something I will definitely put it down in that spreadsheet I mentioned before so that's pretty much packed up and ready to go next year like I said if you want to see another version of a pack list more bivy focused definitely check ride adelaide's uh, videos he did on his setup and uh, yeah 
Looking forward to next bikepacking season. I have something I really want to try next season once we get some warmer weather again. But we have a lot of other stuff to cover before that, so catch you in the next one. Peace! Let's do a cinematic movement. Do 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 do. Cinematic movement. <laughs>